Both pitch and quality play a role in the perception of a female's voice. Let's take a listen to several before and after recordings of individuals who've undergone feminization laryngoplasty, an open surgical procedure to shorten and tighten the vocal cords as well as change the diameter of the larynx. Long ago, man found it was easier to travel on water than on land. Long ago, men found that it was easier to travel on water than on land. Long ago, men found that it was easier to travel on water than on land. Long ago, men found that it was easier to travel on water than on land. Long ago, men found that it was easier to travel. Long ago, men found that it was easier to travel. Long ago, men found. Long ago, men found. There are a number of surgical procedures that have been developed based on different principles. Cricothyroid approximation to tighten that muscle, which raises the pitch into falsetto. Vocal cord webbing to shorten the length. Laser vocal cord reduction, trying to decrease mass. And the feminization and ringoplasty, which consists of the two parts, removing the anterior portion of the larynx and elevating the larynx in the neck. First, let's take a listen to some cricothyroid approximation patients before and after, which I performed in the past so that we get a sense of how pitch and quality might differ with different procedures. Long ago, men found that it was easier to travel on water than on land. Long ago, men found it was easier to travel on water than land. Long ago, men found that it was easier to travel on water than on land. Long ago, men found that it was easier to travel on water than on land. Long ago, men found that it was easier to travel on water than on land. Long ago, men found that it was easier to tra travel on water than on land. I think you can hear that tightening the cricothyroid muscle imparts a certain quality to the voice, very consistent with what many people consider a gay male's voice. And I put the third recording in there with no change, because about a third of the time, the vocal cords relax despite the tension on the cricothyroid muscle, and they return to their preoperative resting pitch. The goal of the feminization laryngoplasty is to remove the anterior thyroid cartilage and collapse the cross-sectional area of the larynx. This also shortens, tightens, and perhaps thins the vocal cords as they are pulled in an attempt to increase the resting speaking pitch and reduce the lowest pitch. It also narrows the supraglottis, which I believe possibly alters resonance. And after removal of the upper portion of the thyroid cartilage, the larynx is suspended higher in the neck from the hyoid bone, again trying to shorten the pharynx and alter resonance. However, I don't know that there's any one right way to change the larynx. In the case of this procedure, it does shorten the vocal cords and sometimes a web forms and they get even shorter. Sometimes I'm not sure how tight the vocal cords are, but they can be tightened later on with additional procedures. And I use this same approach to reattach vocal cords which have loosened after a tracheal shave procedure. I'd like to acknowledge that there are some downsides to the surgery. It's an open procedure through the neck and takes longer to perform. This means it's more difficult to learn and more expensive for the patient. It has a greater risk of infection than other surgeries. And like all surgeries, there's a loss of volume associated with the gain in pitch. I frequently use other tools in conjunction with this procedure. Specifically, I use the KTP laser in the office to correct problems with the feminization. It repairs asymmetries nicely. Also, when used on vocal cords that are already shortened, whether from webbing or the feminization, it can raise the pitch a significant amount. I have also used the CO2 laser to debulk the vocal cords, a more aggressive approach, and although I haven't done this alone, I found it to be very helpful in individuals who've already undergone webbing or feminization laryngoplasty without sufficient elevation of their pitch. It is definitely more aggressive than the surface tuning of a KTP laser and individuals frequently lose their voice for a prolonged period of time after any kind of aggressive intervention. My experience with vocal cord webbing procedures is more limited. It clearly shortens the vibrating length of the vocal cord and there's no external incision. It also leaves open options to have other procedures in the future such as laser tightening or feminization laryngoplasty. In principle, you're primarily adjusting one parameter of pitch, that is the vibrating length of the membranous vocal cord. Anything less than a 50% reduction in length of the vibrating segment probably won't change the pitch very much. I have noted webs that have pulled apart partially over time, 
and I have seen the vibratory margin rotated superiorly which impairs phonation. Let's take a quick walkthrough of the surgery, here viewed from above the head looking down on the operative field. The neck is incised horizontally in a skin crease. Flaps are developed to expose the thyroid cartilage. The upper ala are incised and the upper one centimeter is removed. A vertical cut is made about five millimeters either side of midline and the central one centimeter of thyroid cartilage is removed. Typically, the vocal ligaments can be visualized through the perichondrium, and the airways enter just superior to them. The false cords are divided, and the anterior 3 to 5 millimeters of each false vocal cord is removed. The true vocal cords are placed on a stretch, and a marking suture is placed at about the 50% mark. The anterior 40% of the membranous vocal cord and thyroretinoid muscle are excised. I place a horizontal mattress suture in through the left thyroretinoid muscle, out through the mucosa, and into the right vocal cord, coming out the thyroretinoid muscle. I then return in the opposite direction. I use Gore-Tex because of its permanence and its slipperiness. I place a second suture in the opposing direction, and when these are pulled, it creates a new anterior commissure. The thyroid ala are collapsed back into the midline. Robust O ethabon sutures are placed through the upper border of the thyroid cartilage and the hyoid bone to later suspend the larynx higher in the neck. The thyroid ala are secured together with sutures above and below. A plate is positioned over the thyroid cartilage and secured with four millimeter screws. The Gore-Tex sutures, which are slippery, are then snugged and tightened, pulling the vocal cords up against the interior of the larynx. The thyroid cartilage is snugged up towards the hyoid bone. The wound is closed in layers using absorbable monocryl sutures and the subcutaneous tissues closed. Cyanoacrylate glue is applied to the skin. Tissue removed from the larynx includes the central thyroid strut which is about 8 millimeters wide after the incisions and the 1 centimeter superior thyroid cartilage. I have been able to obtain follow-up recordings on 110 out of the first 144 patients and the median increase in pitch was 6 semitones. This corresponds to the typical difference between a male and a female voice. When I plotted the before and after vocal ranges of the patients, you can see on the left that the comfortable speaking pitch was in the middle of a typical male range highlighted in blue. On the right, the same patients have moved up into the lower end of a typical female speaking range. Additionally, the lowest pitch was cut off by seven to eight semitones, while the highest pitch hasn't changed very much. I would also like to give a sample of how the KTP laser can be utilized to alter pitch. Here's an individual speaking at their comfortable speaking pitch. Long ago, men found that it was easier to travel on water than on land. And again, at their optimal feminine speaking pitch. Long ago, men found that it was easier to travel on water than on land. Then in the office, after topical anesthesia to the vocal cords, the KTP laser is utilized to create a burn on the superior surface of both vocal cords. And here's a recording she made of her optimal speaking voice after the KTP laser treatment. Long ago, men found that it was easier to travel on water than on land. Again, here's her optimum pitch before intervention. Long ago, men found that it was easier to travel on water than on land. And her optimum pitch after intervention. Long ago, men found that it was easier to travel on water than on land. In summary, I've covered some of the approaches I've taken both in the past and currently to alter the speaking pitch from a gender-identified male to a gender-identified female type of speaking voice.